Hello class, welcome to 1.2, add whole numbers. The focus here would be on um, these objectives, which is to add whole numbers and to find the application of adding whole numbers. Now understand that uh, these may be very, very basic information to you, but the whole idea is to reorient you to, uh, to, to be able to apply these things without a calculator, right, to add things we always use a calculator, but uh, the whole idea is without using one, so that you may understand the operation that happens behind uh, the two things that you're trying to add. So that'll be the focus here. So it's it's uh, going to be light in the sense these are things that are familiar to you, but that's how uh, you know lectures in the beginning will be. Right? They we we slowly increase the difficulty level. So right now uh, this may be pretty trivial to you, nevertheless. Um, I'm sure this will be uh, something you'll learn a thing or two new here. Now, uh, when we talk about adding whole numbers, there are a few things that uh, we want to, um, to to remember. Okay, One is, um, of course, the notation. Right? We use the notation as plus. Right? We call it plus. So you'll be asked to write them in words. So plus is the word for the, for the symbol. And uh, we also have um, um, the this operation is called addition. Now these are mathematical terms that I'd like you to be familiar with. Okay, when I say operation, it is you're operating on something. So in order to operate on something, you need you need two things so that they will interact with one another, right? You need at least two things to uh, operate with or interact with one another. So the operation here is addition, and so it has its own rules. It will behave in a certain way. So uh, notice how this plus symbol, okay, it's a math symbol. Now you must understand that math is a language on its own. So it, it, it um, speaks through symbols and numbers and notations. Um, and so when I, when I put um, a, a notation, a mathematical expression, a mathematical expression is something that I express using symbols and numbers, right? So this is a mathematical expression, but uh, this is a language on its own. If you don't know this language, we won't be able to understand what it says, right? So then we, we try to translate it into a language we understand. So we're going to translate this into English, and so that will be 3 plus 4. So we've translated that into words. But how does it really work? So you're going to add on in, um, uh, the 3 and the 4, these two numbers, you're going to add them to get a new result. Okay. So that is what I'd like to uh, share here. So in your ebook, here is uh, a, a quick way of how they describe addition. The operation is addition, the notation is plus. The expression, the mathematical expression, right? It's a statement that includes the numbers and the operation. So that is going to be 3 plus 4. You read it as 3 plus 4 as you write it in English words. And the result, notice how the language, is, you know, it's, it's very mathematical. It says it's the sum of 3 and 4. Okay. So the result is the sum of 3 and 4. And the result can be written numerically as 7, right? 3 plus 4 is 7. So we've got that. Let's go back to the other screen. Now, the mathematical name for the things that you're adding, right, the numbers that you're adding, we call them the addends. Okay. So this is another addend. This is just to help you to um, get through your um, your assignments where when I mean, they use the word uh, or the language like this, like addend or sum, you know, these are things that I want you to um, cross-check with the ebook. You know, sometimes there are things that... Uh, uh, they uh, might uh, recall from the book that we probably didn't um, see in, in a lecture. So you you want to understand that the, these are lectures that are that serve as an overview. Uh, and because of the setup of the homework, no two students get the same problem, right? That's how it is set up. It's set up in the adaptive uh, mode. And therefore, they, there might be times when you come across something that uh, is, uh, is different, slightly different, in, like in this case, where they could say, Oh, um, translate from math notation to words, and then, uh, or, or they ask you to translate what was in words into a math notation. 
So it will say the expression consists of a plus symbol with the addends 3 and 4. So what does that mean? That just means 3 plus 4. So it's just that language that we uh, want to be familiar with. Okay, it's an expression. All right, so um, how do we um, basically add uh, two numbers without um, the uh, without models? Okay. So what we do then have is some kind of a table uh, that uh, that is based on this identity property. Okay. So let me write that here. Math revolves around a lot of properties and um, uh, formulas, right? These are all shortcuts. Now, properties are so comforting because you know these are properties, meaning that won't change because your numbers change. The properties behind them won't change. So, when we talk about properties, we try to put them in general, general language. Okay. For general language, we usually use letters. Okay. So, if I want it, if I say one plus zero. Okay. You know what is the result, right? The one, one plus zero, the sum of one and zero is 1. What is 0 plus 1? If I change the order, it still is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay, now if I, re if I change the number 1 to, say, 7, notice how your result also changes. Now, 7 plus 0 is 7. 0 plus 7 is also 7. So, that 0 is actually helping you to get back the number that was added to it, right? So the addend was 7 added to 0 and it returned that same addend, meaning the identity was preserved. Because the identity is preserved, we call it the identity property. So I can change this to 598 and you know what will happen here, right? That's going to be 598. 0 plus 598 will also be 598. No matter what the number is, you always get back the same result. So to generalize this, we say a plus 0 is a, where a represents any number. Right? Likewise, 0 plus a is also a. Notice how we are trying to speak in the math language by generalizing it using a letter. You can't generalize a number by using another number, right? Because then that will be a specific number. So you, that won't be general. So to generalize it, we have to move away from numbers, so we're using letters. This is the opening of algebra. This is the reason why we need letters. That's why we use letters in algebra. So we think uh, math is all numbers. Yes, it's all about numbers, and sometimes we need the help of uh, you know, uh, English letters or Greek letters, as, as we advance in math, we'll be using uh, other kind of notations. We need operations, as in symbols, to help us to generalize these kind of properties. Okay, So, uh, this is called the uh, identity property of addition. Okay. Because uh, there are things that uh, do not work in other operations. So, this is good for addition. Okay, we are adding whole numbers, so identity property of addition. We like to identify these uh, uh, properties, uh, I mean the sum of these, of these things, by using this kind of a table. So we are not using models uh, as such, and we will be using these kind of tables because that is more mathematical. Models are also mathematical, no problem with that. It is just that, uh, you know, it is too visual that you really need some kind of prop to show you how that works. So you need a, a diagram or a figure or a graph and things on. But when it's a table, table is, um, you know, um, is a very, very intuitive mathematical form by which we try to uh, capture information, by which we uh, condense information, we collect information, and data is all secure in a table, ta in a table or a tabular format. All right, so you look at this. Here the operation is a plus. And so this is how you read it, okay? So you look at the the first uh, column and look at the row and see where they are mapped. So this 0 plus 0 is mapped to this 0. If I take this 5, 5 plus 2, see where they meet, okay? So the 5 and the 2, they meet at 7. 
So you know 5 plus 2 is 7. So you, we use this chart as a way of adding. You could also use the number line, right? That's a very traditional way to use the number line. Number line is a manipulative way of uh, looking at it because it's even more crisper, right? A number line is not, doesn't take as much space as a table, so it's even better. But uh, I wanted to uh, uh, introduce to you the table um, technique that the book uses, which is also really cool. Okay, So you notice that in all these cases, zero property mat matches really perfectly because every time you take a number and add it to a zero, which is this column, you get back that number. But any time you add it to some other number, it will change. All right, so what do you think is 9 plus 6? So here is 9. There's a plus and here's the 6. See where the 9 and the 6 meet. They meet at 15. So you know 9 plus 6 is 15. And you, you this just gives you an idea, but you definitely cannot exhaust all the numbers because all we did was a 9 by 9, right? So we only went up to 9 here and went up to 9 there. And that itself is a huge table. But uh, what we're trying to tell you is that, you know, this is not practical for larger numbers. That is when we'll be referring to a more manageable technique. But uh, just understand that uh, this is another way to visualize this information. So leading from the identity property, what we saw was a plus 0 and 0 plus a gave us the same answer a. That leads us to the next property called the commutative property of addition. It sounds like a huge word, but actually speaking, commutative. Look at the word hidden in the word commutative. It's commute, right? Commute means to go back and forth. Okay, to and from. So think of this example. If you're going from uh, home to college, that is equal to the same distance as going from college to home. Meaning the two points are this, uh, the, the distance is the same. Now you can argue and say, oh, what if I went on a different route? <laughs> okay, so now that would be obviously an argument uh, for the sake of the argument. But here I'm trying to say the commute, right? The commute from a home to college is the same as a commute back from college to home. So that is what we mean by commutative property. So commutative property holds true in, in, um, in addition, okay? It doesn't hold true for everything, uh, for other operations. So this is only true for addition and wherever it's true we'll put that operation okay so remember how we uh, we we like to first look at some numbers and see how that is helpful and then generalize it so let's say you had um, 3 plus 2 3 plus 2 is 5 what about 2 plus 3 when I switch the order that's also 5 okay so um, uh, let me try a different uh, set of numbers what about 7 plus uh, 4? It's 11. What about 4 plus 7? That's also 11. Okay, let's change the numbers. Um, 63 plus 7. 70. 7 plus 63 is also 70. So, what I'm noticing as this is what we do as mathematicians, right? We look for patterns. Does the pattern change? Does it so you test it with different possibilities. And you notice that the order does not matter. The order does not matter because you're always getting back the same answer, right? So then what I'm saying is I can put it out like this. So 3 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 3. 63 plus 7 is the same as 7 plus 63. So if you kind of extend this argument and if you wanted to generalize it, remember we need two things to add, right? And one of them is not a zero like in the previous example of identity. So when you have to add two different things, you want to generalize them with two different letters. So what we're saying is if A is a number and if B is a number and you add them, A plus B, 
it will be the same as B plus A. A and B are numbers. Because you are generalizing them, you are using letters. At this time, I also want to see, uh, want to note that you see that I write my letters in cursive, right? There's a reason for that. Now, let's take this very A and B, okay? Now, um, if I don't use cursive like this, but if I say, if I write A like this, see how slowly or when you're writing it in a, in a quick manner, your uh, small, if your A doesn't have a tail, it actually begins to look like a 9, right? And most of you write B like this, right? See how it slowly transforms into a 6, your B transforms into a 6. And what happens is you might be tricked by your own handwriting and instead of treating it as a B, you might see it as a 6 or the other way around. To avoid all these confusions, I like to use cursive, which is a, a little bit of an exaggeration, right, of the letter. Uh, it's beautiful, first of all, but it's also, it exaggerates so that it doesn't um, get confused with the B. For, because, because I write my B always like this, even if I write it sloppy or something like that, um, you know, I, I, I can never confuse that with my 6. Even if my 6 is sloppy like that, you see how very different they are, at least to me, to, to understand. And uh, when you write it for, uh, for an exam, you know, the, because remember how you have to submit, uh, uh, you know, written answers for your exam as well. So uh, the handwriting really matters. So it's a good habit to develop. If you've, if you've not done this before, please drop or undo all those uh, old habits and, you know, start afresh with new habits that will help you through your math journey. All right, so your commutative property says A plus B is the same as B plus A. Okay. So that's really uh, cool. Now, how do we add uh, whole numbers? Well, remember, we're trying to add this without uh, the uh, use of a calculator, without the use of a model. We are not using charts or tables. So the way we do uh, add uh, numbers would be vertically, the traditional way that you have learned. So if I said add... 43 plus 69 then what you're going to do is put them vertically one below the other and this is where the place value chart comes in 43 3 is in the ones place 4 is in the tens place plus put the operation here 69 okay you have to line them up by their place value you don't line them up anyhow you want okay but here it's fine because both were two-digit numbers, so they did line up perfectly, so not much of a confusion. So 9 plus 3, 10, 11, 12, 12, right? So you put the 2 here and you put the 1. So it's the 12, but the 1 is carried to the, um, to the uh, tens column. And then you add these three numbers, okay? 4 plus 1, 5, 5 plus 6, 11. So the answer is 112, 112. Now, uh, when we talk about, um, you know, let's say, okay, let's just do one more uh, problem. Let's do a three-digit number. Remember, you have to do this uh, by hand. You're not supposed to do this using a calculator. So you are, uh, you have to show work, right? So we always start from the rightmost end and work leftwards, right? That's the direction. Because that's how the place value is aligned. Okay. So this is the ones place. This is the tens place and this is the hundreds place. 6 plus 4 is 10. So 0 and carry over 1. Now I have three numbers here in the middle row, uh, sorry, middle column. So I have to add those three. You can add in any order. Remember commutative property? You don't have to do 1 plus 2 and then add that to the 8. You can do the other way around. I personally like to do it the other way around because it's helpful. 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 plus 1, 11. Right? So I have the 1 there. And then I'd like to, because 1 is easy to add in the end, I'd like to do it this way. Commutative property helps me here. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So the sum here is 910. Right? 
So you have to keep them in their position so that they are aligned by their place value. Okay. Now let's try something that is um, a little different. 1683 plus 479. Okay, so now I have to put 1683. You don't put the comma when you're adding because the result, it is for the sum, the end result that you will do the comma and polish it. When you are, when you're computing or when you're calculating or operating on them, do not put uh, that information, the comma there. Okay. Okay, 1683. So if you look at this, this is my ones place, tens, hundreds, thousands, right? Now the 479, 479, you know that that's only three digits. Nine should go under the ones place, seven should go under the tens place, and four should go under the thousands place. Whatever be your hurry, I don't know why you would be in such a hurry, but whatever be your hurry, you should never ever... Uh, you know, mix this order because just like that, it's going to change your answer completely, isn't it? So if if it helps at all, you know, put an X or or something, you know, smiley face or something to to kind of um, I I don't like the X nowadays. Uh, I mean, when I was a when I was a student, a, a young child, when I learned these things, we we did the X. Uh, but now we are learning this in, in context of algebra, so I don't like to bring in the X because we'll be using a lot of X in the in, in algebra. Okay. So um, the uh, there's one symbol I don't see we use as much in math. So I will ask you to use the star. Okay, so a star to kind of uh, hold the position. It's a placeholder to say uh, nothing goes here in this place. Okay, this is supposed to be blank. Okay. All right. Uh, now it's time for us to add nine plus three is twelve. The two here and the one on the top. Okay. Now remember, commutative property allows you to. Uh, switch them around, right? So choose the way you'd like to add them, okay? So you could do the 7 and the 1 first and then add it to the 8. You could do the 8 and the 1 first and then add it to the 7. So the order doesn't matter for addition. So uh, so you go ahead. So 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. So I put the 1 there and the 6 here. So I have to add these. Now 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. 1 and a 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So you have 2, 1, 6, 2. And then I want to put the comma there. Okay. Now uh, I'll just show you what uh, could go wrong if you did not pay attention to the order and you thought you had to align it from left to right. Okay. And then you put the star there. 3. Okay. 9 plus 8. 17. 14. 7. Right? 14. 5 plus 1, 6. Notice how huge this answer is. You're adding, so if you if you were to estimate, think of it as money, only then, you know, we are all the more careful. <laughs> okay, think of this as money. Okay, 1,600 roughly, $1,600 plus roughly $500. Okay, would that bring you up to $6,400? No way, right? Absolutely wrong. So, so, you know, you, you need to eyeball your answers to see if your, your exact answer is in the neighborhood of what you would expect, right? So, it's 1600 and you're adding another 500. Yes, so that makes, you know, a 2100. So, it's, it's all falling in place. So, you really have to um, um, do that kind of estimation parallelly to see if your answers are matching. Now, how would we add three numbers? Well, let's uh, start with the num with with the problem. Twenty one thousand three hundred fifty seven plus eight hundred sixty one plus eight thousand five hundred ninety six. When you have three of them, of course, do them two at a time. Okay, so line them up vertically. Uh, again, the commutative property allows you to choose any two numbers first. It's just more intuitive to do in the same order that you have because there is no big advantage in moving around the terms. So two, one, three, five, seven. If it helps, you can space it out some more. Two, one, three, five, seven. Yeah. So two, one, three, five, seven, eight, six, one. So I always do it in this order and then see, okay, I have eight, six, one. Then I have to do the plus. Seven plus one, eight. Six plus five, eleven. 
carry over the 1, okay, 8 plus 1, 9, 9 plus 3, 12, carry over the 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 2, okay, don't put any comma yet because you have one more number to add, so I have the plus 8, 5, 9, 6, so I'm going to go here, 6, 9, 5, 8, and then, then I come back and see, okay, I have 8, 5, 9, 6, okay, remember I mentioned about the star, uh, again, it's your call if you wanted to put the star to help you kind of block that spot so you don't uh, mess up with that spot. That's uh, You're welcome to do that. Okay. So now what do we have? We have 8 plus 6, 14, 1, 9 plus 1, 10, 10 plus 1, 11, 5 plus 2, 8. I'm sorry, 5 plus 2, 7 plus 1, 8. I went a little ahead. Okay, nothing to carry over here, right? So you simply add these two. 8 plus 2 is 10. That's a carry over 1. 2 plus 1, 3. So the answer is 30. So now we had, we've exhausted all three and I did it in two layers. So now the answer is um, 30,814. This is the time you bring in the comma and you always box your answers so we know you've reached the end of your problem. Now, we will be doing a number of word problems because what is the use of math if you can't really apply in real life, isn't it? So, for that, we have to understand that uh, when we use it in word problem, nobody goes around saying plus, you know, for all uh, purposes, right? There are some times when the word plus makes sense. There are some times when, um, you know, the word increased makes sense. Uh, sometimes when the word total makes sense. So, uh, for, uh, for, the, for all the vocabulary we have in the, in the English language, we have this, the operation for addition expressed in these different words. That's what this table kind of shows us. Plus, and they're saying, okay, how will, it, how will it look? They give you an example, 1 plus 2. This is how we will write it. Sum, the sum of 3 and 4, that's how they, the language will be, 3 and 4. So in the place of and, because of the word sum here, you're going to insert the plus symbol. Increased by, so 5 increased by 6. Increased by means it is being added to, so 5 plus 6. More than, so 8 more than 7 means you add the 8. Look at the order. It's 7 plus 8. Although order doesn't matter in, in addition, it will matter for other operations. So understanding the language is very important. Don't just blindly see the more than and just put the plus. It is 8 more than 7. So think of the, the, the wording and the arrangement. It is 8 more than 7. So you... You already have 7 and you have 8 more to it. That is why 7 comes first and then you add 8 because it's 8 more than the original 7. Then you have uh, the total of, the total of 9 and 5. Again, the word total corresponds to plus symbol and so you have the 9 plus 5. Added to, very straightforward, 6 is added to 4. But remember, even though it's straightforward, the language really helps you to put the order because the order does matter in some operations, it's good to develop that practice right here, even though in addition the order doesn't matter. 6 added to 4 is very similar to 8 more than 7. 6 is added to 4. So originally it was a 4 and 6 was added to it. So that's why you have the 4 plus 6. Okay. So then when you have uh, problems that say translate and simplify, what they want you to do is to translate this, uh, uh, this expression in words into mathematical expression and then find the answer so which means you'll have to when they say simplify translate and simplify you're going to go from this column to this column and they'll have there'll be one more where you have to do one plus two which is three three plus four which is seven and so on right you have to give the answer to it so say the question said translate and simplify And it was 28 increased by 31. So the first step is to translate it, right? So let's do it word by word. So 28 is 28, nothing um, changes there. Increased by. So this 28 is increased by. So plus 31. So this is the translation part. Then when you add these two, you have to put them vertically down, right? So 28 plus 
31 here uh you know the the digits matched so no star or no extra space 8 plus 1 is 9 3 plus 2 is 5 so the answer is 59 and this is where you did the simplifying so when you do the simplification and you're done with it please box your answers so that we know that you've reached the end of your calculation because this is more like a word problem because it's all wordy you will come back and say 28 increased by 31 is 59 and you will box that 59 because that was the answer that you presented okay. now these are very very um what do i say it even though it is like this it still is abstract you might have word problems that will be a little more <laughs> uh, you know relatable so let's look at um, a couple of them let's uh, look at this example how earned grades of 87 93 68 95 and 89 on the five tests of the semester what is the total number of points he earned on the five tests okay so now notice how uh, in this ebook you do have the show solution so for all the worked out examples you have this show solution you also have problems that you can try out uh, you know for your extra practice all right, so um, let's go back to the problem. Um, and if you need to dwell on this problem a little longer, you can pause the video and look at it and then, um, you know, play back for the explanation. Uh, well, this is the data. This is the information that they've given us. What is the total number of points he earned? The, look at the language. Total number of points he earned on the five tests. So the total of all the five tests is the key uh, word that I see here. So that is what I will be using to, um, to, to understand that total is equal to sum, which is equal to the operation plus, right? So then I have to translate. When I translate, what I do is I say the sum or total of all five tests. Okay. And so that becomes, so I translate to math notation. So what are the five scores? 87 plus 93 plus 68 plus 95 plus 89. Yeah. And then this is the time to simplify it. And in order to simplify, I have to do the actual computation. So I have to do two at a time. Nine plus three, ten, one, eighteen, one eighty. Just to keep it, uh, you know, easier here, I'm going to take this one eighty. And what we do is, when we do that, you know, if you want, you can just cross off the ones you've already counted, just so that you don't re-add re, uh, them. Okay. So notice how I put. Uh, you can put a star here if you want for the one okay i put them too close uh, but um, watch out for that it was 6 14 1 1 plus 1 is 2 there's nothing to add in the star position it's 248 so that's done 248 plus 95 so um 8 plus 5 13 1 9 plus 1 10 14 1 2 plus 1 3 then we have 3 4 3 that's also done plus let's start again 89 yeah 9 plus 3 is 12 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 1 13 uh, 1 there 3 plus 1 is 4 432 so then you come back and then because it's a word problem you have to interpret your answer so you say how, uh, what is it, what he earned, right? So how earned a total of 432 points and box your answer. Notice how you need to always provide a numerical answer for all word problems, whatever be the section, whatever be the math course. 
okay you need to have a numerical answer and the units of measurement this is a math expression to say what uh, what does that 432 stand for is it 432 hours is it 432 feet is it 432 degrees what is it right so the unit of measurement really really matters for us to make an understanding so is it 432 people or is it 432 points and so when you specifically say points it puts the whole thing in perspective and it's so much you know meaningful to understand that um, the interpretation of the answer uh, it, it's all it all um, comes together and in particular you're actually answering the question so you can pull that language right from the question to know how you can uh, respond to um, the particular question. Here is a try it problem. It says find the perimeter of, of each figure, this figure. All lengths are in inches. Okay, so now we have the lengths uh, given to us and they are measured in inches. So we are given the unit of measurement in the problem, right? It is not given in the diagram. They did not write that in the diagram, but it's there in the problem. So remember, perimeter means um, the sum of all the sides. Okay, So peri means outside, meter means measurement, the measurement of all the outside uh, or the sides. Okay, now this is a shape where it has many sides. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's got 8 sides, right? You're going to add all 8 of them. So... Um, let me come over here. So I'll just say peri oops, perimeter peri means outside, meter means measurement. Measure. Okay, so it has eight sides. That's something you need to f figure out for the problem, okay? It has eight sides and you always start from one side and go clockwise that way you're not missing out on any sides right so in that sense I am trying to do the four plus nine plus four plus three plus two plus three plus two plus three one two three four five six seven eight okay you can always go back and cross check with this one two three four five six seven eight and make sure that the numbers are all matching up okay all right, now it's time for you to add. Um, again, typically we do it, you know, vertically, right? So you're going to do 4 plus 9. So those two are counted. Okay. That's going to be 13. Okay. Then I take this 13 plus 4 to get this one. 17. Then I do the 17 plus 3. 7 plus 3, 10, 1, 1 plus 20, 20 plus 2, 22, 22 plus 3, 25, make more room, plus, uh, not plus, mm, 3 is done, 25 plus 2, 27, 27 plus 3, 30. So the perimeter is 30. So perimeter of the figure is, remember how we interpret it, right? In words, it's a sentence. Is 30 what? We are told that it, the old lengths are in inches, so we say 30 inches. Because you added the word inches, uh, it's, a good, it's good to box both, both parts together. So the numerical answer as well as the unit of measurement. Okay. All right, class, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one.